Greetings from Elite English Academy, Madurai. Welcome to this online preparation series for PGTRB English. In this video, I am going to discuss Geetanjali written by Tagur. Let's have a brief note on Rabindranath Tagur, who lived between 1861 and 1941. He was basically a Bengali poet. He wrote the national anthem for two countries. One is for India and another one is for Bangladesh. Gandhiji called him as Gurudev. George V awarded knighthood to him and he gave it up in 1919. He was a poet, novelist, dramatist, short story writer, music composer and patriot. His notable work is Geetanjali, which was published in 1912 for which he got Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913. He was the first non-European to receive Nobel Prize for Literature until then. As far as Gitajali is concerned, the Bengali collection of 157 poems were published on August 14, 1910. So the English Gitanjali or Song Offerings is a collection of one or three English poems which was translated by Tagore himself. It was first published in November 1912 by the India Society of London. The word Geetanjali is composed from Geet, which means song, and Anjali, that is offering, and thus means an offering of songs. So the popular themes of Geetanjali are nature, love, humanism, and God. It is very interesting to note in this collection, Tagur calls God, Tagur addresses God as my darling, at the center of my life, my love, my master, O oh love, O oh my friend, O oh my best beloved, my father, my king, my light, mother, my own comrade, that is friend, my God. So here, it is very important to note how Rabindranath Tagore has immersed himself in the nature of God as well as his own uh, offerings. So here he can be considered as the best person who has devoted himself to God. Sonnet 1 Introduction Sonnet 1 talks about the endless nature of God. Then it compares human beings to empty vessels which is filled by God again and again. And one more thing, human beings are compared to flute which is played by God. So this is a very interesting sonnet. Let's discuss that. Now let's enter into the analysis of the first sonnet. Let me read the sonnet first. Thou has made me endless. Thou refers to God. Such is thy pleasure. So you have made me endless. So that is your pleasure. That is my pleasure too. This frail vessel though empties again and again and fills it ever with fresh life. This frail vessel, this frail vessel means human body. Though empties again and again and fills it with fresh life. Here the figure of speech used is the human body is compared to empty vessel. So this is a hidden comparison. So it can be considered as metaphor. This frail vessel, this body is emptied again and again. Whenever the human body dies, God fills it with another soul and fills it with fresh life. So that is another soul. So in the first two lines, the, board, the poet says, God has made me endless because he has been filling this empty vessel again and again with new lives. This little flute of a reed, though has carried over hills and dales. So what is compared to the little flute? Again, it is a metaphor. The little flute, the human body is compared to little flute. The little flute of a reed, though has carried over hills and dales, dales valleys. You have taken this body. You have taken me to hills and dales and has breath through its melodies eternally new. So it is very interesting to note human beings 
are compared to the flute through which god has been breathing melodies eternal eternally means endless endlessly new god has made use of human beings as a vehicle to give birth to so many melodies at the immortal touch of their hands they god immortal endless without uh, being destroyed at the immortal touch of their hands my little heart loses its limits in joy and gives birth to utterance ineffable ineffable inexplicable that cannot be explained so the immortal touch of your hand so when you touch my hand my heart loses its limit and it enjoys so my heart is filled with limitless enjoyment happiness and gives birth to utterance ineffable i couldn't know i couldn't control my body and soul because of your immortal touch it sings the songs of melodies which is eternal the infinite gifts come to me only on these very small hands of mine it is very beautiful to note this god you are coming with so many gifts whereas my hands are small so i i i am able to hold only few gifts that is that are given by you ages pass and still though pours and still there is room to fill so this talks about the immortality and endless nature of god ages pass many ages have been passing but you are pouring you are just giving me more gifts but still there is room to fill so i have become in such a way that you have been filling me with the gifts of you gifts of god endlessly so this is the poem in which tagore completely surrenders himself to god so paying his obedience to god in a spirit of humbleness the poet says that soul is eternal and immortal such is the will of almighty human body is like a weak vessel a vessel can be emptied and filled time and again like that human body is again and again dissolved to be reincarnated with fresh life god is omnipresent god is present everywhere the poet is like a flute made of reeds and he is a skilled flute player who plays upon his flute the poet new and fresh melodies over hills and valleys god's bounty is inexhaustible that is god's blessing is inexhaustible he has been generously and profusely showering his endless gifts on man since times immemorial the hands of man are small like those of a child who cannot hold the gifts human soul is not copious enough to enjoy the abundant measures of divine bliss so in this poem the poet celebrates the presence of god celebrates the gifting nature of god next we are moving to sonnet 2 in this sonnet the individual human soul is compared to a bird which is in its eternal journey to reach god so in this sonnet we can find out slight tinge of autobiographical elephant tagur himself is a great singer and poet so he compares that the song can please god so at the same time we can witness the humility of the poet humble nature of the poet at the end of this poem now let's discuss the poem as such when thou commands me to sing it seems that my heart would break with pride so when the when god you commands you ask me to sing it seems that my heart would break with pride because god himself has asked me to sing and i look to thy face i look at your face and tears come to my eyes this shows how devotional the poet is towards god so the moment i look at your face tears drop come to my eyes all that is harsh and dissonant in my life melts into one sweet harmony so the poet says 
when he is about to sing the song all bad things all dissonance and all confusions in my life melts so normally the solid things melt but here the poet says all the confusions bad things in my life melts into one sweet harmony harmony just many musical instrument that go go together and my adoration spreads wings like a glad bird on its flight across the sea a beautiful imagery by the poet so all his adoration adoration worshiping nature my adoration spreads wings like a glad bird so open comparison simile spreads wings like a glad bird on its flight across the sea the sea is compared to infinite endless like that my sweet harmony in praise of you in your adoration it spreads its wings eternal i know though takes pleasure in my singing so here very humbly the poet acknowledges that dear god i know you finds happiness i make you happy through my song i know that only as a singer i come before thy presence he says only as a singer in praise of you to praise you i just come near by you in your presence otherwise i don't deserve your presence i touch by the edge of the far spreading wing of my song thy feet which i could never aspire to reach very humbly the poet says normally i cannot reach your feet but at the same time i can touch the edge of your feet i touch by the edge of the far spreading wing of my song thy feet which i could never aspire to reach the poet says only through my song i can reach you and also says that you accept that and you enjoy that In the concluding line he says drunk with the joy of singing i forget myself and call the friend who art my lord drunk drunk is the word that is used for drunkards drink drank drunk one who is completely influenced by alcohol that person is called as drunk drunkard so like that here the poet is drunk with the joy of singing in praise of god since he is uh, singing the songs for god he is intoxicated by his religious nature i forget myself and call the friend who art my lord so finally the poet says you are my friend and you are my lord so how he is able to reach god that is only through his song he is able to touch the feet of god so dear friends with this the discussion on tahu's second poem in geetanjali is over now we are moving to poem 3 god is considered in this poem as the music master god's music is compared to a gentle stream so here again this song celebrates the nature of god now let us analyze the poem i know not how those sings my master my master god i do not know how you sings like this i ever listen in silent amazement i could just respond to you only in silent amazement amazement bewilderment in entice nature controlled nature the light of the music illumines the entire world so your music gives light to illuminates light gives light to the entire world the life breath of the music runs from sky to sky your life of music compass from or runs from sky to sky from one sky to another the holy stream of the music breaks through all stony obstacles and rush, rushes on here a beautiful figure of speech is there the holy stream of thy music so here god's music is compared to holy stream so it is a metaphor hidden comparison the holy stream of thy music breaks through all stony obstacles all obstacles are just wiped away and still it is marching and it is rushing on 
my heart longs to join in the song my heart wishes to join your song but vainly but i couldn't but vainly struggles for a voice but i am struggling my song is struggling for a voice i would speak but speech breaks not into song and i cry out baffled the poet longs to sing along with god but he speaks he is able to speak but he is not able to sing but speech breaks not into song and i cry out baffled and i am cry out because of confusions ah thou has made my heart captive in the endless meshes of the music my master meshes network how oh, thou has made my heart dear god you have enslaved my heart captive a victim a prisoner thou has made my heart victim or captive in the endless meshes network of the music my master so in this poem tagu says he has become an addict he has become enslaved by the beauty of god's music again this poem is the celebration of god and his music his music finds expression in nature now we are moving to song 4 in this poem flower is used as a symbol so in this poem advocates self purification and his completely surrendering to god now we are entering into the poem life of my life so beautifully tagur addresses god like this life of my life god you are my life i shall ever try to keep my body pure so you are my life i'll be try to i'll be trying to keep my body pure knowing that thy living touches upon all my limbs so i realize you are living touch in my limbs in my body i shall ever try to keep all untruths out from my thoughts knowing that thou art that truth which has kindled the light of reason in my mind dear god hereafter i will try to keep all untruths all wrongs all evils out of my thoughts because thou art that truth which has kindled the light your truth or you have kindled the light of reason in my mind dear god you have touched me and purified me so i will try to keep my body safe and pure free from evils for the sake of you i shall ever try to drive all evils away from my heart and keep my love in flower what is that flower knowing that thou hast thy seat in the innermost shrine of my heart the poet says so you have you are going to seat or you are going to occupy the innermost shrine of my heart so his the poet's heart is compared to the shrine the chapel the small temple where god will reside and it shall be my endeavor it shall be my action to reveal thee in my actions knowing it is thy power gives me strength to act here the poet conveys the message that my flesh is weak my body is impure my mind is impure but with your magical touch and with your power the strength that you have given i'll just become purified so that is because of god so again this poem is the celebration of the nearness of god where god comes down to live at the hearts of pure human beings now we are moving to song 5 the poet longs for the nearness of god in this poem rest and peace according to the poet cannot prevail in the absence of god so he needs the nearness of god and also he dislikes worldly activities because worldly activities will take him away from god now let's discuss the poem 
I ask for a moment's indulgence to sit by thy side. In the very first line, the poet expresses his desire to be with God nearby him, indulgence. So the activity there. The works that I have in hand, I will finish afterwards. Whatever may be the work I have as a worldly man, I will finish that later. Whereas I would like to come and sit nearby you. Away from the sight of thy face, my heart knows no rest nor respite. Respite means it is the time for relief or taking rest. Dear God, if I go away from your sight, so I cannot enjoy rest and I do not know what to do. And my work becomes an endless toil in a shoreless sea of toil. So it is a beautiful sentence. So here he says, when I go away from you, my work becomes an endless toil in a shoreless sea of toil. So when there is a sea, so the sea comes to the shore. So if there is a seashore where people come down. Whereas if there is no shore, nobody can find any rest like that. When the poet says, so if I couldn't see that, if I couldn't see your face, my life becomes endless toil, toil, hard work. It is tiresome. So it is the metaphor. Today, the summer has come at my window with its sighs and murmurs. So sighs and murmurs are human qualities. So it is personification. And the bees are playing there minsterly at the court of the flowering grove. So minsterly, rapturous songs happy songs the bees so when there is when there is a different season summer season at that time flowers will be more as a result bees will be busy and the bees are plying plying means moving here and there plying they are minstrelly at the court of the flowering grove so there is a beautiful garden where the bees are very busy making good sound and song. Now it is time to sit quiet. The poet seems to be tired of life. He wants to sit quietly, face to face with thee. He wants to have a face to face interaction with God and to sing dedication of life in this silent and overflowing leisure. He beautifully says overflowing abundant. So now it is time to sit quietly in front of you and see you face to face and to sing dedicated song of life in this silent and abundant leisure, overflowing leisure. Again in this poem, the poet celebrates the nature of God and he expresses his desire to abandon all the worldly activities and sit nearby God and face him face to face so that he can share all his life story. Dear friends, Tagore's poems can be called as lyric because lyrical poems expresses the likes and dislikes of an individual. In this entire collection, the poet expresses his likes and dislikes regarding the worldly activities and God. So far you have listened to the analysis of five poems from Tagore's Gitanjali. The detailed analysis of all the 103 songs are available in the main course. Dear friends, if you would like to join the course and start your preparation for PGTRB, don't hesitate to call 6381458485. I hope this video is useful. If you find it useful, please like and share it among your friends. For more videos, subscribe our channel. Thank you. All the best.